har din egen plats här, eller? Ja. Det är ju Vi har vi har ju någon måste. Just next to him. I can see that uh, David is getting acquainted with Carlo, who's quite new on this uh, Diamond League uh, scene. Uh, David, your second day at the Olympic Stadium after playing with the kids uh, yesterday. Now you're a more grown-up runner to play with here to today. Carlo is emerging Swedish runner. Uh, let's uh, uh, listen about your season. I was really impressed with your 600 meters in Birmingham. I'm still watching. Uh, your laps here, you, you passed 200 meters in 23.3, 400 meters in 47.1. That's quite promising, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you know, um, I usually like to uh, test my speed in, uh, in a shorter distance, because uh, my 800, something like 400 or 600, just before major competitions, and uh, normally it helps me to sharpen my uh, speed. Normally I go to Australia, run a 400, but this time around uh, I didn't do that in Australia, so it was a good idea and it was part of our plan to run a 600 in Birmingham. Yeah, uh, I was happy, you know, though I expected to do uh, better than that. But uh, nevertheless, you know, to run a BP, that was my second 600 meters to finish. And uh, it was good because it's a rare event, of course, we don't have a lot of experience uh, in that distance. I guess your training is going quite well if you almost do the world best at 600 meters and you say that you expected more. Well, uh, yeah, my training has been fantastic uh, this year, you know, right from the build up uh, the foundation. Uh, I never had any problem with the injury and uh, that's always great, you know, whenever uh, I'm training well. And this year, of course, uh, uh, my injury is completely almost gone and uh, I've been finishing my se session well and feeling strong. Before then, I was struggling a bit toward the end of uh, training session, especially long runs when I was doing something like eight, ten kilometers toward the last two kilometers, I start uh, feeling pain as well as the pain of training. So it become a, a double tragedy. So, but in, uh, now I'm finishing my training without any problem and that's important to me. And uh, this is what's making me become better every day. So the decision to run two 800s in Australia is that because of you working more with your stamina, as you said, that you are better uh, at endurance running this spring? Or? Yes, exactly. You know, um, I was still, uh, you know, uh, loading at that at that time. You know, I was still doing much of uh, long runs, distance, and um, before and usually before Australia, I, I usually don't do a lot of track. And um, I was a little bit cautious not to do something too fast uh, because uh, I, I didn't do at that time a lot of tracks. So uh, since we had a plan of running a 600, then we said uh, we better just start with 800s because I've been doing more loading. And then when I sharpen up and try to uh, get into more quality, uh, fast session on the track, then move to faster uh, competition. If you go to eat and you see these large groups of people running all together, what about yourself? If you do mileage, as he told us now, do you have a group to train with or do you go by yourself? Or? Yeah, um, you know, Brother Colm have a small group uh, that uh, we train throughout uh, the year, but uh, normally when we, uh, we have school holidays, he trains about over 
30 to 40 uh, juniors and always uh, that is uh, during uh, uh, December uh, holiday and uh, April so we also get uh, a good uh, training uh, and a chance also to mingle around with the juniors and uh, they always uh, also um, uh, support us because uh, uh, you know uh, whenever we are training together uh, they also learn from us and as well we learn from them and they are strong you know they are always enthusiastic young people ready to move they are always uh, very focused and uh, they want to achieve and uh, sometimes it's also put us on our toes because we also want to be there and to lead them and they follow for, uh, from what we do. So uh, that is uh, how we normally start. But Brother Colm has a small group, Agustin Choge and uh, a few others that we train all together. Uh, unfortunately, this year, uh, my pacemaker, Samit Angui, has been my training partner for long, uh, got injured. So uh, of late, I've been sometimes training alone which is also good because it's an Olympic year and uh, it's more tactical uh, championships and uh, uh, like 2012, I like at some point to train alone so that I can be, I can have a good idea and uh, be able to uh, know my splits and how I can do in races without pacemaking also. Yeah, you didn't uh, need Sammy in London. <laughs> did a quite a good race by yourself. Uh, let's get back to Sammy later, but I still uh, have this picture of the youngsters running with you, uh, knowing how Kenyan youngsters usually train. It isn't a problem that many youngsters try to push really hard to impress on you, if you're doing a, an easy running? Well, uh, it was fantastic, you know, yesterday, you know, uh, to mingle uh, with the young ones, you know. Uh, it so looks exciting, you know, I know uh, if they will see that picture in the future, uh, they are not going to believe and uh, they are going to stay and they are going to remember for the rest of their lives. And uh, well, I can say that uh, in Kenya, you know, we have a lot of young talents, young uh, athletes who actually are trying and uh, want to become elite athletes. Uh, although it's not easy, uh, out of a uh, hundred of them, not all of them makes, of course, it depends uh, with a lot of things uh, to make you a successful athlete. You know, uh, my coach usually says it takes more than the first legs to make you a successful athlete. We have seen a lot of them who are very talented, but uh, at some point maybe they make mistake in their career and they disappear. So. Uh, uh, as uh, my coach will say, uh, training there is just not having and doesn't guarantee that you can become a successful athlete. But uh, it's just like any other learning process in life. You're going without Sami this year, and uh, I guess Brother Colm almost never follows you to uh, meet. He uh, doesn't leave uh, Eton and Kenya too often. So. Other athletes have a coach, they have a manager, they have an entourage with them. I guess you are more independent than most runners out here on the circus, aren't you? Isn't the mental approach one of the best things? Well, uh, you know, Brother Colm operate in his own different system. And uh, when I join him, he has been in co uh, coaching for more than over 30 years. And... Uh, ever since he never liked to travel around with his athletes and uh, you know when I asked him one time you know he's more like relaxed and uh, he just say you know uh, I, do, I do my part I prepare you and uh, you do your part you know even in school uh, when I was still in high school you know, sometimes at some point he just come and talk to you, or advise you generally, and he doesn't give you like, give you a real program on how you are going to follow in school. He just give you like handout and then tell you, okay, you are the one who is going to figure out when you are free in school and what time, but you know what to do. These are this and this, but you know how you can fix it. 
but we meet once a week, like on a weekend. And I think that also prepares us mentally that uh, we have to be independent at some point. And uh, um, we never had any problem, but we travel around with our manager everywhere we go, James Templeton. And um, we talk on phone frequently uh, with my coach back at home. But how much are you actually self-coach? Do you do your own programs? So does Bubba Combe uh, write programs for you? Yeah, uh, whenever we are at the camp, Brother Colm does a, a program for us. Uh, but uh, when we are out there, at least, you know, program is just a repetition of, because it's a similar thing that we usually do frequently. And uh, from time to time, we know, uh, you know, prior to the competition, is just to do some easy striding or a few track session depending also mostly on how the body feels. And especially when you have a competition this week, for example, and then you have another one uh, in one week's time, um, normally you have to figure out and also try to balance so that you don't just get fixed into pro program and you stick to it even, uh, even when you feel like your body's weak, you know, you don't have to to, to kill yourself. So uh, I think that is also uh, another thing that Brother Colm does. And mostly, when, even when we go to the track, we might have an idea of what you are going to do. But he also relies on the response that uh, we give, uh, the feedback on our session and how we feel. And of course, when he has uh, that trust and he you know we are hardworking, then uh, it, it makes it much easier for us to work together. And then you got your family. Are we going to follow you to Rio? How do you do in that case? Um, well, I'm still uh, talking to my coach. Uh, we are still looking for a plan, see if he can, he, he can come to Rio. And uh, I think it will be a, go a good idea. But uh, well, we, we are still talking, and uh, we haven't finalized yet. So I think it will be a good idea if he, he goes to Rio this time. If you don't bring your family with you, I'm sure you're going to send a lot of messages to them because you are one of the Kenyans who is most prolific on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, I think you're quite fond uh, of these gadgets. And uh, Tell us about it. Well, um, sure, yeah. You know, last time in London, uh, actually, my wife, I, uh, my wife was there. She, she watched that final and I broke the world record. And uh, this year, um, I don't think she has a plan of uh, going there because uh, we have a little one and she's taking care of her. And uh, uh, we are taking it a little bit this time around. But uh, well, uh, the world is uh, becoming a small place, you know, with uh, communication, you know, uh, social media. You know, Instagram, uh, you send photos every time, and uh, even uh, FaceTime, you know, uh, Skyping. So uh, every time we talk and uh, we just see each other physically, so um, we feel like we're just together. Great, let's go over to Kelly through the social media. Do you think there are some athletes in Sweden who actually spend too much time on social media and uh, less time on the track? Yes, I agree with that. Tell us a little bit about uh, your background. You're one of the most emerging Swedish uh, runners. Uh, when did you start with athletics? When I was 10, I think, but then I don't compete so much. Just training for it was fun. And uh, I was a hockey player, so my dad is uh, water. It was a good uh, basic training on the summer to the hockey. So. Then I was 15, 16, I started to run more. And uh, <laughs> four years ago, when uh, David broke his world record, I had a PB of, of a couple of seconds over two minutes. So it's quite fast the uh, last four years. Yeah, now you're sitting next to him. Uh, did the Olympic final mean something for you, for your motivation of watching David running it? Yeah, it was really impressive. I remember where. I uh, was in, uh, when I was watching uh, the final and it was, I think uh, it was uh, maybe one of the greatest uh, moments in athletes' history. 
I agree. What about your own athletic moments so far? Because you're still uh, quite young. Uh, what's the best race you've been uh, running so far, do you think? Yeah, travel a much. I uh, live like, uh, I love to travel and uh, see new countries and uh, so, and uh, that's the most, uh, I think it's the funnest with uh, running. And also, I want to see who, how good I can be. It's just, that's the motivation. And the goal for this season, you've been running quite good, around 147, the first races, but I guess uh, you want to run even faster and looking both Europeans and maybe the Olympics, or? Yeah, I'm uh, hoping for the Olympics. I have a quite good race in the not so good concurrence. I have uh, one mini race and uh, last week race in Bislet was maybe the baddest from my this year. I test some things before with the massage and they didn't fall out as I was hope. So this week is back to the normal and uh, hoping for a better performance tomorrow. Now it's an incredible field you have to meet, the best you've ever been running with. So how do you think? You, you do the Basakowski tactics just uh, staying behind or? Yeah, getting a, uh, it's very good field. I think the most everybody has uh, PB under 143 and uh, season best in 144, so. It's really just get a back and I uh, get a good, uh, good uh, first 600 meters and hopefully gonna kick some last hundred. You shouldn't watch these times. <laughs> 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 David, do you remember your first uh, races uh, out from Kenya when you were in similar uh, conditions as Cal is now? Your first trip abroad, which one was that? Your first trip abroad from Kenya. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, when I was uh, in high school, uh, is when I st uh, actually I started uh, running my 800, and uh, that is uh, when I joined Brother Combs. And uh, after the camp, uh, we were doing a, tra a time trial, uh, and uh, unfortunately, they didn't have uh, lines because we train on that uh, track. If you want to run a 400, they have to mark. So uh, they say the shorter distance uh, is 800 and to 3,000. So uh, that is where I get to run my first uh, 800. Uh, I won the race that day, and I ran 150. So uh, and beating also the best 800 in that field. So that change changes everything, and I start thinking of 800 as my best distance because. Uh, also, my coach saw the way and uh, the smoothness I was running, and uh, it, he advised me that I think you can do eight better than uh, the 400 and the 200. So um, I think I started a little bit higher. 150 is, is tough, but it's because I hung out uh, behind the guys, and then in the last 150, uh, I kicked. Is there a similar moment for you, Kelly, when you decided, uh, let's skip hockey? Yeah, the very first real season was two years ago, when uh, I had a go to qualification to Eugene, the World Juniors, and I remember the race uh, in Solentona here in Stockholm, me and um, Andreas both made the qualification on the one, on the 50, it was the three second PB, and the first real season I, uh, tried to uh, get uh, more time on training, and it was good to to get a qualification time in the first race of the season. That's great. Finally, David, do you have some good advice for Kalle at the beginning of his career? Well, um, you know, uh, as I can say, my coach usually say, running and training is a process, and uh, the most important thing is uh, just. Uh, to be focused and uh, work hard, you know. Sometimes training can be tough, it can be painful, but uh, if you have that passion, in which I believe you do, uh, just love what you do and uh, enjoy it, because uh, that's the road you, you, the path you chose, and uh, hopefully, you know, with the right thing in place, you know, support and uh, everything. You know, you're gonna make it. You're gonna make it because uh, even as at 
when we started, sometimes we used to, we used to see uh, Bozakowski, Bungay, Yamboy running 144, and at that, that time we were running 150s, and we were thinking, will we be able one time to reduce six seconds? 150, 144, it's, it's just unbelievable. But with time, with good uh, training, and as we were growing, I think we were able to do that. So it's a process, and you just go step by step, and uh, you need that patience, because uh, there is also a lot of uh, obstacles, and you just need to be patient. Sometimes uh, you get disappointed, but never give up, you know. Uh, in 2005, I never made the team for the UR Youth. And uh, I, I got pushed a little bit uh, during the trials. And I was complaining. I went back to my coach. You know, somebody pushed me. I wasn't happy. I should have maybe won that race. But he told me, no, 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 no. Just be cool. That's good. Focus for next year. It's the World Junior. So I thought he's going to say, oh, no, that's too simple. But he told me, no, no, no. That's good. So um, that also changed my mentality. I started thinking of the following year in which I wound up uh, winning the World Junior title. So that's how life is. So just keep it uh, cool and move forward, uh, step by step, and everything is going to be OK. Oh, we're going to follow that process. Uh, <laughs> any more questions to the 800 meter runners? In that case, I think if you could lift the diamond trophy together, we'll see the future of Swedish atomometers. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to bring it back, but... <laughs> 